Let's begin with a little review. Uh, this goes back a long ways. Uh, this goes back to our kindergarten days. Okay, so will you all do this with me? I'd like to talk to you today about relaxation. And I, uh, I was given a gift this morning uh, to talk about this. I'm going to be talking about relaxation in our daily life and relaxing in the face of challenging circumstances. So as I'm preparing to come down here to talk with all of you, uh, I walked out this morning to find that my car had been stolen. So uh, my wife drove me down. <laughs> So this is my opportunity to practice being relaxed in the face of challenging circumstances. <laughs> yeah, it's a good opportunity, right? <laughs> now, we, we all understand that relaxation is important for peak performance. We understand that we can't go full bore all the time. But I'd like to talk to you about another idea not relaxation as a break in between moments of peak performance, but relaxation as a key to optimal performance. Relaxation as an important component when we're performing at a peak. So let's do this all together. Uh, take your hand, put it out in front of you like this, and spread your fingers out really, really wide, very tight, make your whole arm tight, very strong, and now shake it back and forth as fast as you can shake it like this. OK, good. It's a lot of work, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Now, relax your hand. Just let it be very, very soft. Shake it back and forth as fast as you can. Which is faster? <laughs> yes. So when we are tense, our effort is absorbed as friction and dissipated as heat. When we are relaxed, our efforts produce movement, momentum, and results. Now, this is literally true for physical activities, uh, but it's also metaphorically true for relationships and communication. So another example. Um, this, is, uh, this is my friend Alex. Uh, Alex does Aikido. And uh, this is Laurel. She, uh, she practices Aikido together with me in St. Paul. Um, if Laurel puts her arm out in front of her and makes it very strong, right, makes it very strong and tight, and Alex tries to bend her arm, uh, he's able to... <laughs> She's able to bend her arm with a little bit of effort. Right? She's, she's tough. <laughs> <laughs> but if Laurel relaxes her arm and uses her mind clearly, just reaches out from her fingertips like she's reaching out to the balcony, and Alex does the same thing, tries to bend her arm, he finds it's very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> So I was just sharing this exercise with Alex and with his friend Kyle. And so, uh, Alex, now it's uh, your turn to practice. Right? I don't want to show you things that I can't also teach you. So if Alex makes his arm very tight, right, he's already fighting against himself. He's already using his muscles to fight against his own muscles. So Kyle, all Kyle has to do is help Alex's biceps win the fight. <laughs> he's already fighting himself. But if Alex relaxes and just thinks about reaching out to the balcony, reaching back to the back row there, uses his mind clearly, then all of his effort goes into doing the work he's committed to doing. And he's much stronger with less effort. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to tell you there's a difference between relaxation, as I'm talking to you about it now, and collapse. Often when we think about relaxation, we have images of being flopped down on the sofa, laying back in a hammock, right? Taking a break in this way. And while that's nice, uh, that's not the kind of relaxation that gives us optimal performance in the moment. I'm talking about the kind of relaxation that we recognize when we see athletes at the peak of their game. Right? When we watch a football game and see a quarterback in the pocket, and we say, oh, he's so relaxed under pressure. Or we're watching the Olympics, and we see uh, Peekaboo Street doing a downhill run uh, in the Olympic Games, and we say, she's so relaxed. 
This is the kind of relaxation that we're talking about, a vibrant, vital relaxation, where our mind and body are calm and we're not engaged in any unnecessary effort. There's a relationship between this kind of relaxation and alignment, and I'd like to share that with you also. So uh, just, just uh, for a moment here, I'd like you to scooch a little bit forward on your seat so you can sit up. And I'd like you to, to lean forward a little ways and then relax your body. Just lean forward and relax. More, 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 yes. And what happens? You notice your body slumps, your body collapses. If we're not in alignment, then relaxation will lead to collapse. So now, take a moment to, uh, to sit uh, straight, not tight, but straight. So your body is balanced over your sit bones, your spine, the vertebrae of your spine are stacked one on top of the other so that the bones can support the weight of your upper body. And then relax. Relax more. Relax more. And notice that you maintain an alert, open condition of your body. And this is correlated with an alert and open condition of your mind. So you can cultivate relaxation by practicing alignment. And you can learn good alignment by practicing relaxation. When you can relax without collapsing, this is good alignment. Again, this is literally true for uh, physical movement and for how we use our bodies, but it's also true in communication and in relationships. So how do we create this uh, relaxed but vital state of mind? I'll show you an exercise uh, together with Laurel here. If Laurel uh, stands here and if her body is in a relaxed but dull state, a collapsed state, even if she uh, looks to be in good posture, if I apply a little test here, any kind of disturbance, she's moved off her center. She doesn't have stability. So she's going to do an exercise we call Takubi Shindo Waza. Uh, it's shaking the hands to relax the body. So she'll begin with a small movement in her hands, make that movement larger, larger, and then allow that movement to settle on its own by a half, half, half. And now, still very relaxed, but connected, vibrant, she has natural stability. So I'm not going to ask you to do this in your seats, you'd hit your neighbors, that would be impolite. Um, but we can do another version of this exercise. So uh, once again, I'm going to ask you to scooch forward a little bit in your, your chairs. I noticed you all slid back <laughs> again. That's OK. That's OK. Uh, so we'll just come on forward again. And what I'm going to ask you to do and, uh, is to find a good balance point. So your upper body is balanced on your sit bones. You don't have to do a lot of work to maintain your posture. Right? And then take that posture and lean it off to your right, like this. And then we're going to let this rock back and forth. And then let that rocking settle by half, half, Notice how quiet it gets. This relaxed, alert condition of our body correlates with a relaxed and alert condition of our mind. I'd like to show you now how we apply this condition of living relaxation, vital relaxation, to some of our Aikido techniques. And these also provide metaphors for communication and interaction with others. And once again, uh, my friend Alex here. So if Alex stands here with his arm outstretched, 
if uh, in, in Aikido we practice self-defense techniques, so we, we practice uh, things that look like throws, if I want to move Alex and I try to push down, and I try to push down, he naturally resists and pushes back. Right? So it's very difficult to, to move him. If I relax, I can open myself up to what Alex is already doing. Alex is already moving. Right? We're all moving all the time. Our blood is flowing, our lungs are moving, and we're constantly settling under the forces of gravity. So if I relax and open myself up to what's already happening, I can move together with Alex. Oh. <laughs> and in, invite him to change posture. <laughs> So once again, people don't like to be pushed and pulled. If I try to push Alex, try to make him do something, he resists. But if I relax and just help him continue the movement that's already happening, then he moves very freely on his own. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, expanding this a little bit, let's take a look at how this might apply in a, uh, in a communication or a relationship. So this is my friend Laurel, and Laurel and I have conversations from time to time, which means sometimes uh, Laurel and I may be expressing opinions. So if, uh, if for example, Laurel and I are standing here, right, this might be uh, like an opinion. If I try to force my opinion on Laurel, she, uh, she, may, not, she may not like that. She may resist. Right? People don't like to be pushed and pulled. Have you noticed that? Right? People don't like to be pushed and pulled. So instead, if I relax, I can open myself up to Laurel's perspective. In fact, it's natural if I relax, it's natural for me to align myself with Laurel's perspective. And once we're aligned, it's natural for us to move together this way, the way that Laurel's already going. And once we're moving together, maybe Laurel will be open to other points of view as well. <laughs> okay, so same thing, just done in motion. Yeah, 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 like so. Thank you. So once again, let's review. <laughs> Relaxation. First, we show up. Will you do this with me? Then we align. We all move together. And we connect with the energy that's already here. Match the energy that's here. And then allow that to settle down by half Half, half, and allow the feeling to continue. Thank you very much. <laughs>